Hello. Welcome back to the Infernal Twins Project Podcast YouTube Series Extravaganza. <laughs> uh, this is Cal. Hello. I am Kyle. We are on a road trip. We are driving back home um, from a weekend trip to see some friends. Uh, we have decided that we do this quite often and we end up talking the biggest bullshit on the way oh, anyway. Yeah. Um, so we decided that uh, why not take the camera along and uh, make some content out of it. Um, yeah, so we are on the road. We had a great weekend with some friends. We played a lot of board games and oh my gosh, Codenames is a huge favorite, but another one I played for the first time is Blockbuster. Um, I got torn apart. I don't know movies apparently. I need to watch every movie out there. I died. Bodes it, well for this podcast. Yeah. Yeah, um, it does. It does. Yeah. Blockbuster is super fun. It is. Uh, I don't know if it was made during the time of the the store or if it was made after the fact, but it's like the tie-in board game for the, the Blockbuster store. Yeah. It's essentially, um, you know, two teams are going head to head and, and like movie trivia, but like it'll be like you have an acted out uh, one word and uh, a quote and between those three you have to get your team to guess three movies depending on where you put each movie yeah which is super fun but also you really have to be in sync with your team like yeah. linked up I mean to be fair our team did win and I like yeah. to think that the, the, the three of us our team I'm not counting that bullshit last thing like otherwise we still won we, we, still, we, we still won but the three of us, so it was it was Cal and myself and our friend Tyler, and between the three of us, I think that we have, like, enough of, like, varying levels of film knowledge. Yeah. And different levels of, like, like we have our own corners of, of film that we are all passionate about. Yeah. And our own niches. So, like, where Cal and I excel in horror, Tyler would know a lot more, like, fantasy or... Yeah older 80s flicks and stuff like that. We needed to guess uh, 28 Days Later um, and Tyler and I were guessing and I was like, oh, of course I know that one. And I was like, 28 Days Later and Tyler was like, I would not have guessed that. What the hell? Like, yep. what? what? Had never never seen it. that. Yeah, yeah. I'd never heard of it. Um, so, like you said, yeah, we just excel in our own corners of cinema. Yeah. Super fun. Um, uh, I think games like that are fun in in a in a, uh, a vacuum of just fun to play with your friends, but also if it's a movie game, I also in the back of my mind the whole time I'm like, yeah, I just I'm like this is perfect because I already have so much useless movie knowledge like swirling around in my head, and I want to expel it somewhere. So yeah. it's either here like in these videos, or it's in when we're playing games with friends. Like I just oh, yeah. you know has to go somewhere. That's cool. Red Oak Brewery. We do a little good brewery here and there. We, uh, yeah, we've only ever done one brewery tour, and it was super fun. It was yeah. a very simple, it was a smaller brewery, so it was a very simple tour. Yeah. But very fun. Um, and we, we love beer. So, love well, alcohol. You're, you're getting there. You're getting there. Yeah, I didn't hate it. Um, yeah. IPAs are too hoppy. It's weird. You did like that IPA, though. I liked it, but then it's like I went to that other one. Do you remember how smooth it was, I said? And then you go back to an IPA, and you're like, whoa. It, yeah, if you've been drinking anything else and you go back to an IPA, it's like a fucking punch in the face. It's, yeah. In a good way, really I think. But like, well, it depends on the IPA. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, yeah, the brewery tour was fun. So, um... We've been talking a lot of movies recently because I know this will not come out anywhere close to when we film it, but today is Sunday and it's Oscars Day. And there's a lot of movies going on around right now, but let's switch it up a little bit. Let's talk about some TV shows. Okay. There is a lot of new seasons coming out this this year. Specifically, was June, July? June is going to be fucking packed. Oh. You have, there's probably more, but like the big three... And they're like the biggest three shows on TV right now. You have yeah. The Boys season four, four. season four, uh, The Bear season three, yes. and uh, The House of the Dragon season two. Yeah, I think there's a fourth one of something that was circulating, but I can't possibly. remember. Yeah. Um, 
probably a bunch more actually yeah. maybe movies too but like uh, oh, uh i think the acolyte is also in june yes that's yeah, what it the, is that the was biggest, the fourth one the next star wars show is also coming out like june is going to be a fucking oh my gosh month. yeah in terms of those so you have the acolyte you have the boys you have the bear and you have um house of the dragon i know that we haven't seen all of those shows yeah. but rank those in terms of excitement um, like most to least or least to most whatever like, you know. um Let's see, let's see. I'm, okay, so my top is definitely The Bear. Mm-hmm. I'm obsessed with that show. It's fantastic. It's... It, also uh, the only one you've seen. So. Yeah, the only one I've seen, yes. But um, then the next one's probably going to be... Um, uh, what was it? Acolyte? The, the Acolyte. Acolyte. Um, that one's going to be next because I know nothing about it and I'm very excited. Um, and then the boys, I haven't seen any of the boys, but I like getting a project. I have to watch season one, two, and three. Uh, was it like new gen? Uh, gen V. Gen V. Yeah. Gen V. Um, and then I need to, then I can be excited for season four. Yeah. And, um, Kyle and, um, our good friend Cam has seen it. And so we like to, um, watch the show. And then when the finale comes out for that season, we all like have like a watch party for it. So I need to catch up. So and our can... track record is not great. So no, far. it's not. So we need the boys it is to not. come. <laughs> um, it's really not been a good track record for finales. Every time I feel like every time we watch a finale together, it's like we're like, well, oh, that was not what we wanted it to be. Yeah. Um, and then it's gonna be uh, House of Dragon uh, last, just because I have not seen the first season. I've heard it's really good, but I have not heard enough rave about it. Yeah. So it's probably at the end of my list, but I'm still going to watch season one so I can watch season two when it drops. Yeah, I, I'm going to go least to most. And okay. also, yeah, the House of the Dragon is also bottom for me. Okay. I have not seen season one. Love Game of Thrones. I mean, Game of Thrones is one of my favorite shows of all time. I don't know how many times you've seen it. Yeah, I rewatched <laughs> that show. I'm probably about to start another rewatch. You like, are. Constantly in a rewatch of Game yeah. of Thrones. Um, love Game of Thrones. So I, I'm surprised that I think I just didn't. When House of the Dragon dropped, I was still a little salty over Game of Thrones. Like, it, it yeah. had been long enough that I wasn't, like, mad about the ending because I was rewatching it and all that. But I was just like, do I want to commit again to this world and be disappointed? And I'm not, that's pessimistic, but maybe it's not going to be disappointing because it's not the same showrunners and yeah. it's not based on the same kind of source material. Um, but for whatever reason, I think it was just because I didn't watch it the night that the the pilot dropped, I decided I wasn't going to watch it live at all, and I would just wait. And so, now with season two coming out, I am going to go back and, and watch it. I'm sure it's great. I, like you, like, I have heard good things, yeah. not, like, o- overwhelming praise, but the people that I know that also love Game of Thrones seem to be positive on the show. Yeah. So, that's four, though. Um, three is probably... Yeah, three is the boys as well. I think my I'll probably have the same order, but yeah, three is the boys season four. Um, I have seen the boys. I love the boys season three was fucking wild. I cannot wait for you to get to season three. Um, I have not seen Gen V, and I'm a little frustrated because I don't like when shows do this. To where now I I am required to watch Gen V to now see season four of the boys. Yeah. Like I want them to be their own thing. And I want to put a pin on that. I want to come back to that. Oh yeah, because that's a whole conversation. Yeah, yeah, and I definitely want to dive into that, but like, uh, what's your next... uh... Yeah, so that's number three. Number two is, I'm actually very, I love The Bear. That's like our favorite show on TV right now. Yeah. That's actually number two for me. Um, So The Bear is number two. Uh, Super excited, especially with the way season two left off. I just... We're good, we're good. I'm so sorry, I should have got that. No, I was going to go, so for reference, (laughs) I saw a sign that this is like splits off. I'm like, oh, I see our town. It's telling me to go this way. <laughs> and it wants me to go the opposite way. I looked over last second at the navigation. Very and good like, reaction time. Yeah. I'm not, Thanks. I can't navigate and rant. No, sorry. no. That, well, it's okay because I caught it. You keep ranting. Um, and then you're on this for seven miles until exit 219. Gotcha. Um, the boys, or sorry, no, the bear, the bear. Um, love the show. Probably our favorite show on TV right now. Um, season two ended off really rough for everyone and so I want season oh, three. I just yeah. want to hug my boy Carmi. I just want to give him a hug. First of all, get him out of the freezer. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, just really needed it back. I'm excited. But I go back and forth on Star Wars even just this weekend was talking about how I go back and forth on Star Wars with our good friend Tyler and like I 
I will either be super excited for Star Wars or will not care. And this year, there's both because the Bad Batch also, I think, has already dropped season three, the last season. Uh -huh. I would not give less of a fuck about the Bad Batch. I'm so sorry to our friend Cam. But um, the Acolyte, just hearing the little that I've heard about it, I've heard that it is set in the High Republic era, which is, you know, before the prequels, which means the potential for seeing, like, multiple Jedi on screen for a TV show is so cool to me. Because that's what I love about, like, the Clone Wars is that it's just, like, I love a, a show set in the Star Wars universe when the Jedi are just a, a, a normal thing. It's not like yeah. they're extinct and they're not just beginning, they're just there. They're, like, they're the regular characters. Yeah. And so seeing that, I saw in the cast, like, the cast is great. They've got, like, the girl from Logan in it and a couple other oh. big names. One of the names I saw, though, was the guy who played, he did, like, the, he wore the Chewbacca suit for the sequel trilogy. I don't think Chewie's going to be in it, no, but I do think but... a, a Wookiee could be in the show, which is fucking cool to me. I want a main character to be a Wookiee, because yes. that will easily be my favorite character of the show, obviously. Come on, it's a Wookiee. Um, I love that. I, I am excited, because I don't know anything about the High Republic books. I know they've released a lot of books recently to tie in, um, but... I don't know anything about the era. I'm just excited to see Jedi on the screen again. Um, and the creator is the same person who directed the movie Sleeping With Other People, which is like my favorite rom-com of all time. The way that connects to Star Wars, no clue, but maybe we get some some, some romance that's not Anakin and Padme, you know? Yeah. Um, well done, romance in Star Wars, crazy. Yeah, exactly, unheard of. Um, that's number one though, because I just, I, like I said, Star Wars TV can either be like, Bad Batch or like the Book of Boba Fett or the ceiling is that it can be Andor and like Andor is is that's also I think this year but I don't it's not June obviously no I, it's but er, like early next year or whatever yeah but, um, I don't know whenever Andor season 2 drops and my life will come to a complete stop and yeah. nothing will, else will matter except that except that whatever year it comes out if you ask me my, my most anticipated thing of that year it's just gonna be Andor it's not gonna Even, be any <laughs> movie it's just gonna be Andor season 2 yeah <laughs> um uh, yeah, maybe so, that'll get uh, Stan to watch it. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that's, like, my point is, like, if the Acolyte could reach the heights of Andor, then that's, you know, that'll be my new favorite Star Wars thing, because yeah. Andor's just right up there in the top. And, and to quickly jump in on that, uh, the joke I made is we've, we've known too many people who too many. like Star Wars, in fact, can love Star Wars, but they just haven't given Andor a chance. And if you're watching this and you have not... Please do. It's Just quick. Andor. Just know it's not going to be your normal Star Wars. Give it a chance. Think about how in-depth the world of Star Wars is. Do you want to see more of the corners of Star Wars? Maybe other characters who are like, like all this war and shit is going on? What about like the, the, the people like down on Earth instead of up in the stars? Like what are they doing to handle it? This is perfect. Yeah. Like the people who are not directly on the front lines. What are the people in the back doing? Yep. This is like that, and it's f and it's not just like it's not boring. It's fucking beautiful. Please give it a chance. That's what's frustrating is like people always say with Star Wars is they they want more stories that are not connected to the main conflict. Right. And something like Andor comes out and no one watches it. And that this or is they, exactly what you want. Like, yeah. Or they or they'll be like, oh, and that was boring. Like. Yeah. What do you do? You want it to be different or not? I, yeah. I, yeah. So and also people loved Rogue One, and this is a lead up to Rogue One. It's about Cassie and Andor. So yeah. it's, it's season two is supposed to lead up to the events of Rogue One. Yeah. Um, so if you want to see how he started out and how he became who he is in Rogue One, like watch it. But also not just that, it is just a fantastic, like not even just a Star Wars show. It is such a well-written political thriller. It really yeah. is just like a political thriller. And there is so much that they have to say. Like it goes back to like original trilogy Star Wars where like people forget that Star Wars was made anti-war like it's, it's it, it had things to say yeah it's not just lasers you know and and, and or there's not a jedi in sight there's not a fucking blaster like you know it's very gritty and down to earth and it has something to say the fucking speech in the finale just sticks with me it, there's just a whole lot in there that is like it is just fantastic television more than just like uh, genre tele television so yeah not that that's you know coming out in june but i just I need people to watch Andor because oh, yeah. it's fantastic. Yeah, there's a lot of Star Wars projects coming up. Some of them I'm really excited for. Some of them I could not give a fuck. Will I watch it in any ways? Of course. Um, <clears throat> I think that's what's so great about the Star Wars franchise is like I just, oh, it, it can piss me off. It can make me scream with excitement. It's, it's, 
so many emotions and I'm very invested in it. Um, but to, to take a pin back out of something you said, um, to talk about more big franchises is it's insanely frustrating to need to watch another project just to understand the next thing. Like, so you were talking about the boys, how you need to watch uh, Gen V to like... 219 is coming up. Uh, okay. Sorry. No, you're good. Thank you. Um, but um, Marvel does that Ugh. in a, an insane amount. Yeah, Marvel's and I the biggest don't, defender of that. Yeah, but what I don't like is like so many things that are happening in Marvel, people are taking as inspiration to put elsewhere. Yeah. It's just because it's, first of all, some of the things they've done in the Marvel, like the MCU, were not successful ideas, but they, but they, people are using them. Yeah. For example, they're... Um, randomly making it time travel well not time travel and they're randomly making it oh look at all these different realities multiverse uh, yeah multiverse yeah yeah multiverse shit they're throwing that in a lot of things recently i love multiverse ideas they could be done really well but i feel like people are throwing them in there just like willy-nilly with no rules set yeah like it wasn't like that in the beginning and now you're saying it totally is again i'm a huge multiverse type fan what the fuck are they doing? Like throwing it in the stuff. I mean, you can be a fan of something, but it can be ruined if it's only, if it's used for everything. Oh, like, yeah. It's not just that they're, you're saying they're peppering it in for a lot. It's not just that. It, the MCU is split up into like sagas or whatever. Yeah. The first three phases were called the Infinity Saga. These things, three phases are called the Multiverse Saga. Yeah. So they're like all in on Multiverse, which is so frustrating to me. If they, if they just, if they do it right though, there's no complaints. It just yeah. feels too messy the way they're it right starting yet, it. So, yeah. Or, like, getting there. I don't know. So, to the original point, though, is, like, okay, so we wanted to watch um, um, one of the new Disney Plus shows for uh, the Marvel. It's called Echo. But it's like, oh, but you need to watch, you need to watch Hawkeye. <laughs> oh, but if you want to watch Hawkeye, make sure you watch the Black Widow movie, who not a lot of people were even interested in because it didn't even have a theatrical release, and I watched it a did. lot of things in theater. It was in theaters? Oh, yeah, I saw it in the theater. Oh, my bad. <laughs> um, thank you for checking me on that. Um, but, um, oh, it was a theater release, but it also, at the same time, released right on Disney+. Plus. Plus. You, you had, had to pay, pay for it, yeah. but still, yeah, no, no, that's no, what that's I remember. That's because, like, a lot of people chose that option. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah. Um, um, but, like, it was, that's like, okay, so you need to watch Black Widow so you understand this character, but then now you can watch Hawkeye, which is a great TV show. I did like that one. But now that you've watched Hawkeye, now you can go watch Echo. And also, you probably need to watch Daredevil as well to understand some of these characters in here. Yeah. <clears throat> and I don't, <clears throat> Marvel's a, oh my gosh. <clears throat> so I'm sorry. dying today. dying today. Yeah, my bad. I was not, my, my voice is not pod ready. Um, but... Like, that is way too many shows. Now, if you're a fan of Marvel and you're doing it all anyways, cool. Yeah, but if you're I mean, not and you want to jump into, like, every show here and there, it's really hard to. It works out with the the examples you're mentioning because we, yeah, to, to prepare for Hawkeye, I had Cal watch Hawkeye. Sorry, for Echo, I had Cal watch Hawkeye. And, and we both really like Hawkeye. So, like, yeah. the upside is, like, you'll be... Your homework, quote unquote, is like good stuff. We both Daredevil's like one of our favorite shows, so yeah. like we already had seen Daredevil. We're excited for that. So that's the upside. But you're right. The downside is like when you just had to do this needless homework just to watch the show you wanted to watch in the first place. Yeah, yeah. Which is so unnecessary because like if something's coming out and I'm excited for it, I just want to be excited for that and I want to watch that. I don't want to schedule my like month before that by watching other things. Sometimes I. You know, the autism will kick in and I'll do it anyway. Like, we have plenty of movies coming out this year that I have, like, I'm going to rewatch. Um, you know, Godzilla and Kong is coming out at the end of the month. Yeah. I'm trying to, like, watch all of the classic Godzilla and King Kong movies because I've never seen them. Um, so, that's kind of a fun project. But, but like, those are, like, it's not required. Choices. Yeah, yeah. The, the movie is not relying on that. You know, like, you're, you're, and it's different if it's in a series. Of course, you need to watch other, like, you know, Dune Part 2 just came out, and, like, if you haven't seen the uh, the first Dune, you can get by, but, like, it's still, like, you probably should watch it. Right. Because it is but the second like a, in a series. Right. It's a movie series. It's yeah. like, yeah, that's the whole point, but If it's, it's a franchise, like a connected universe, then the connected universe should not all depend on each other. Yeah. Like, it should be... It's like the comics. Like, the comics are all in the same universe, but they all have their own individual stories. Yeah. You know? 
and I do, so like a spin-off uh, TV shows and uh, like, I don't know, like a, a TV show that's a spin-off from a movie, that stuff can still exist without having, like, you need to watch it to understand other things. Like, I, like okay, for example, um, uh, to quickly jump into video games, not to give you guys whiplash, good movie, um, <laughs> but Borderlands um, is a great video game series, and um, one of my, some of my favorite characters comes from uh, Tales from the Borderlands, is what I think it's called. Yeah. Um, and uh, when I went to go play Borderlands 3 for the first time, my favorite characters were in there. So it's like, oh, if you just wanted to play the regular Borderlands series and not some of the other things, like uh, the prequel uh, series um, and uh, the prequel game, uh, or that, like, I guess, spin-off game, um, like, like you don't have to even play Borderlands 1, 2, and 3. But 3 has characters from other game, like the other games, and they were my favorite. But you don't need to know who they are. They're just in there. You don't need to understand it, but, and so sometimes that's the case. Um, like, I guess, for example, like, uh, the Black Widow and, like, Hawkeye, like, like, I it kind of seeing some, uh, one character from a movie in there is, like, you don't need to know, but at the same time, I, I felt like you did need do to know. because Hawkeye's a, a certain case of, like, yeah, that one character, you don't need to know where she came from, but it makes the emotional context of why she's in the show it makes no sense to you if you have not seen Black Widow. Yeah, that's true. This, the, Maybe that was a bad example. but No, you, I know what you mean. Yeah. Though, like, that example notwithstanding, you're, you're making a good point of, like, sometimes you can just say, like, I don't necessarily know where this person comes from, but I'm enjoying their role in this story. Yes. You know, like, I mean, th this is not the same thing, but, like, and I don't know a lot of people that this applies to, but say, like, someone has never seen the, um, uh, the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies. They watch No Way Home. It's still a really cool thing to see another Spider-Man show up, even if they've never seen that guy's movies. Yeah. Because the concept of three different Spider-Man interacting is still a cool concept. Yeah, that's true. That's I was going to say Andrew Garfield, but even that is kind of goes against my point of what I was saying with Hawkeye. Of like, if you haven't seen the Andrew Garfield movies, that one of the most emotional scenes in the oh, movie is not yeah, emotional because that's... you don't know why it's such a big deal that he saved MJ. Like, yeah, you know. yeah. But with the Toby, the Toby ones, like those are my favorite Spider-Man movies. That's what I grew up on. But if, if you go into No Way Home either not having seen those or just not having like a connection to them, you can still appreciate and enjoy his role in the movie because yeah. he's like the mentor older Spider-Man, like the, yeah. the youth pastor. <laughs> the youth pastor. Um, yeah, and that's so that's exactly my point is like there's sometimes you can have characters like Cameo. Cameo. Yeah. There's a difference between Cameo and a direct like yes. link you need to you need the other stuff to understand. Like that that's just it's too much bullshit and it's just happening too much. I think cameo is like a lost part because yeah. the MCU popularized it and then killed it. Like the yeah. MCU made it a really big deal for a cameo in a movie. It was not a big, that wasn't a big mainstream thing in blockbusters before no. that. It would occasionally happen, but it was very unheard of. Yeah. And it, it's like, it's now it's like, it's assumed it will happen in every MCU. They're like, what yeah. is the cameo? What is the cameo? In right. This movie? And they've kind of killed the, they, they've killed their own hype with that yeah. because now I yeah go ahead you go into a movie thinking there's going to be a cameo and one when there's not you're disappointed but two if there is it's just not there's not enough fanfare around it and it's just like well there's that person that's cool I guess yeah you know? and when they do the cameos it's for for like it, it's because it's going to just link into some more Marvel like it's more setup yeah bullshit. more setup bullshit yeah. not like a just like they're I don't know like yeah. the, the cameos just always have like a very specific reason but like and which is like okay but then at the same time the point you were making is like half the time it's like not even for a reason they just want this character in there yeah or brought up or whatever because sometimes a cameo can be fun to just be a cameo of like oh well, there's that guy but yeah. we're not gonna mention that you yeah know? I think Deadpool does that really well where oh. they'll just pull up a random side Marvel character <laughs> For no reason, and they just show up, and it's like, well, that guy was there for five seconds. We're not going to talk about that, though, because this is a Deadpool movie. You know? Yeah. Oh, of course Deadpool doesn't like that. Yeah, I mean, There's yeah, he would. Some... He, yeah. <laughs> he probably mentions that that guy's in the movie. He's like, this. why is this guy in my movie, you know? Yeah, breaking the fourth wall and shit. Yeah. Um, I heard a movie that's coming out, I think, this year, which I'm so fucking excited for, um, has, like, cameo shit like that because it's the same universe, but it doesn't matter if you've seen the other one or not. You can walk into that movie, I believe, without any knowledge, and it's uh, Furiosa. Oh, interesting. I think they're having the character from the last one. What's his name? 
Max? Yeah, Max. Max. Yeah, yeah. Max. Sorry, it's been a while since I've seen the movie. I think they're just having Max be in the background for certain scenes. I, I saw what I think you saw, like the tweet, and maybe I just didn't read it correctly, but I thought it was just someone saying, like, it would be cool if that happened. Oh, I thought that was a. That's like. Like, I didn't think it was a news reporting tweet. Oh, saying, like, I, okay. Maybe which, I read it wrong. No, that but, would be really cool. Yeah. But I don't know if that works out timeline wise, but no, that is a good point of like, that would be a cool instance. That's of, how you do cameos. Like, sure, that just like, yeah. you go, oh, like, yeah. I mean, you again, you could do cameos in any way. I'm not saying it has to be that way, but right. like, it just, there's way too many. We were complaining about how Marvel does yeah. that. It's just cool to see it outside of um, like franchises or like connected universes. We watched uh, the movie Collateral recently. One of the first scenes of the movie, Tom Cruise's character is handed a briefcase by a man who is bald and wearing a suit. And the first is like, okay, and you look, and that is Jason Statham, but it's just his character from The Transporter. Yeah. Fully handing off a, a briefcase to Tom Cruise. And it's just like, they don't make fanfare out of it. So it's like, if you've seen the movie, it's cool. If you haven't, it doesn't like take away from it because it's still just, a, it's, just it's an establishing scene of the movie. It's not even yeah. an important scene. It's just a cool thing because that was back in 2004 where like again that was like unheard of to see something like that to so connect cool. two movies but it's just i love i love i love shit like that where michael yeah. mann had he had also was not involved in the making of the transporter movies either so he had to talk to them and get permission to be like can i like use jason statham for this one scene <laughs> and i like to think he pitched the idea and they went what the fuck that's so cool like yeah and they were probably like oh of course you can michael mann director of heat yeah. you can do whatever you want <laughs> yeah oh my god um Man, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, I loved the the transporter trilogy because there's only three. Um, and uh, like when uh, Kyle showed me uh, Collateral, like Kyle was like, "Oh yeah, by the way, that's not just Jason Statham. That's Jason Statham transporter." And I was like, "You're fucking kidding! I've never heard of that for like an action, just an action movie. Just it's just an action series. Action movie. And then just pulling a character into a standalone action movie. I was like, yeah. what? That's so cool." It seems like there's more freedom to do that in action movies because there's less, I wouldn't say less rules, but you can just play around a little more yeah. with the, the background. Like, I honestly would be, I, the, the movie series is over now. I mean, hopefully, fingers crossed, John Wick is over. I don't want them to make another movie because of the way 4 ended. But I would have loved to see randomly, because the, a lot of those movies, sur the, they're surrounded by assassins trying to take out John. Yeah. I would love to see, like, a Jason Statham character from some movie show up. Yeah. You know, like, like, or, like, a random assassin, action movie yeah. character. He's, like, a background assassin or a hitman trying to kill John. He just gets taken out by yeah. John. Like, that would be hilarious. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, yes. I do... So, when it comes to, like, the John Wick series, I do want other movies from the characters from 4... Oh, yeah, yeah. Because Sorry, to clarify, I yeah. mean, like, I don't want another John Wick, like, starring yeah. movie. Because he's, he had a perfect end to his story. Yes. Yeah. No more, John Wick doesn't, he can be brought up. Because that's a cool little, like, cameo itself, just the name. Yeah. And his name, Probably there's no him. way you can't bring John, uh, bring up John Wick. He's got to be brought up. It's yeah. going to happen. I don't want them to overdo it, but it's going to happen. And, like, it's going to be great. We'll all get excited. But I just, he's, we know where he is currently. And that's where he is. Yep. Don't try to convince me otherwise. Yep. You don't need to be in denial. It's happened. Um, but I love the characters in, in that. Um, and, I mean, it seems like they did set up that they will be doing that because of yeah. the, the post credit scene. Sorry, I mean, this, is movie, this movie's been out long enough that, like, the spoiler warning, if, if you've seen John McFord, great. If not, I guess skip ahead, whatever. Yeah. But, um, the post credit scene with, I don't remember the character's name, but his friend's daughter. Yeah, uh, yeah. Her, her father dies in the movie, and she is going after Donnie Yen. Yeah, So, yeah. like, I, I love that setup, because she was one of the more interesting characters. And even, like, her, it wasn't the same character, like, her song plays in the credits of the, the movie. Oh, yeah, So it's cool, yeah. because, like, that scene happens, and then you hear Eye for an Eye pop up. What a great what song. What is her name? Like, Rila? Uh, no, Rina. Rina Hariyama? No, it's got an S. Rina S. Uh, they're gonna, they're gonna blow us up just, in the comments. Yeah, we should just not say her last name. Just, Rena, yeah. it's Rena, Rena. though. Um, we had a great friend uh, who lives over in Seattle. I'll be able to see her in concert as well. Um, and I'm just, yeah, she's a great artist. She's got banger songs. Oh yeah, and, we listened yeah. exclusively her after we saw. Yeah. Oh, thing. oh yeah, especially Eye for an Eye. That was a great song. Yeah. But then I ended up just going on a full kick of her stuff. Um, our friend, she suggested a bunch of really good uh, music from her too. So I, yeah, full kick from that. 
Uh, but yeah. that's great potential for like a spinoff or like a oh yeah another movie. She could she could like sing your own fucking theme songs. That's dope as fuck. Yeah. Like yeah. I mean, that, there's like potential for good and bad in that because like they they made the fucking what was it the Continental and that came out with <laughs> yeah. no fanfare no one talked about it even the guy who so the, I guess the main character I didn't know this because I just didn't even know what happened but like the main character is a younger Winston uh, like he it's how he starts the Continental oh which okay. as a premise sounds fantastic yeah I think that sounds cool but it's a younger one so it's not Ian McShane and that immediately takes away a lot of my hype because I love Ian McShane yeah and he, even he has said he was like I don't know why they made that they didn't talk to me or Keanu and I would have said no like, he was fully vocal about, like, what were they thinking? Whoa. <laughs> Which is so... I love when actors are just... They don't yeah. care about, like, you know, keeping contracts or whatever. When they're like, no, fuck this. This is stupid. Why are you yeah. doing this? I, I just love when they're honest about things. I, but, do, I do prefer honesty, yeah. Yeah, and I, I just... I remember hearing about that when it was coming out and thinking the premise was somewhat interesting. Um, but I was still a little raw over Lance Reddick dying. Yeah. I know I know Sharon is also a character, and so that would be a little tough to see. But, like... Yeah. I don't know. I, the premise sounds cool, but just because of the way it came out, and no one, one, no one talks about it. I don't know a single person who's even seen it. Yeah. And then with the the guy who played the main character in the original series, or uh, played Winston in the original series, like fully disavowing it, that also was yeah. just like I don't. If they don't have the okay from the stars of the original franchise, if Keanu, who is a producer on all the movies, is not even okaying it, then I don't know why they're making it like have some respect for the original franchise. You know? Right. I don't know. With like the we're talking about all these connected universes and yeah spin-offs and prequels and like all the homework you have to do yeah i had mentioned like we are a lot of movies we're doing is homework and, and re-watching one that i'm really excited about because we mentioned it already but we uh deadpool 3 is coming out yeah or whatever it's a deadpool and wolverine deadpool wolverine yeah um cal has only seen the first deadpool movie i have not seen two i haven't also has not seen well has seen a single episode of loki um yeah. And the TVA is clearly playing a heavy role in um, in the, the new Deadpool movie, headed up by my boy Tom Wamsgans, CEO of Waystar Royco, um, my king. Um, so I'm really excited about that. But again, there's stuff that's missing for Cal, and that that's that's the one that I am okay with like doing the homework for because it makes more sense that you would want to see the stuff connected to that. Uh, well, you have seen Logan as well. I, I should mention, like, you've seen oh, Logan. Oh, yeah, I've seen Logan. So you'll see, because I want to see how they address that with Wolverine. I don't want this to be the Wolverine that died in Logan. Uh, another example of John, like, let his his story end the way it did, because it was beautiful. Yeah. And it made me cry. Like, just leave that alone. It was beautiful. Um, but we're, we're going to be we're watching all that before 3 comes out. I We've kind of talked about Deadpool, but we've never really had a discussion. Like, what are your thoughts on, on the, the not the character, but, like, the first Deadpool movie? Um, I really liked the first Deadpool movie. It was, uh, loved the, uh, he, Ryan Reynolds does a great job as Deadpool. He literally, it's like, he's just the same person. Um, but I loved the, uh, getting into kind of just, like, the origin story of Deadpool and, like, kind of getting into that. I feel like I've just never seen well, there's not... Has there ever been a Deadpool movie in general? Besides no, no, the X-Men? the first one. Yeah, okay. Um, we don't I, talk about the X-Men one. Yeah, yeah, we don't. But I just was making sure besides his on... Like, his on-screen appearances, it's yeah. only been... It was Origins Wolverine and then Deadpool. But then Deadpool. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's cool to see his origin story. Um, and just... I don't know. Deadpool is just a very interesting character. I like the... Just like his fucking profanity like the way that man speaks is just vile but like in a very very entertaining way um the breaking the fourth wall it's great um the if i remember correctly i really like the soundtrack for it which oh, is, is good soundtrack. yeah i remember that trailer coming out with like that was it the dmx song or whatever yeah. oh that was such X a big give deal to, yeah yeah that was that good. trailer leaking broke the internet yes it did i remember that oh my gosh it was because it was a passion project for ryan too ryan reynolds had long wanted to make a Deadpool movie yeah. the comics had even like started to like reference him like it was such a thing in pop culture yeah. so the trailer leaked from Comic Con and yet yeah, the people lost their I, yeah. I lost my fucking mind seeing that trailer it, it, it's a great trailer anyway it was it was great yeah yeah um, no I sorry go ahead oh no you're okay I was just gonna keep talking I was like the, the story was a simple like 
defeat the bad guy, go save the girl, and sometimes that's all a superhero movie needs. Yeah. Simplicity. Especially if you're just, like, introducing the character. It doesn't need this big villain that's going to set up next five movies or something. Just keep it simple. Like, I, I just, I really liked it. It was, like, straightforward. It's great. It's enjoyable. It didn't even, if you wanted to leave it there and never do a movie again, it you, cut, you can. Yeah. You didn't need to set it up or anything. But it's so easy to keep going at the same time. It was, I really liked the first one. That, to me, is, like, the the sign of a perfect superhero movie. Yeah. And I'm not saying it's a perfect movie. No, but, like, but talking about how like and you can sometimes you can just keep, keep it simple i think we lost that at some point during the mcu where phase one of the mcu has some incredible origin stories yes. the first thor movie is fantastic i mean oh. obviously iron man is like held in such high regard for oh reason. yeah captain america the first avenger like really great origin stories yeah we quickly moved on from that and lost the art of the origin story because people yep. thought they wanted like more complicated stories and they didn't they just found origin stories boring. But if you look at, like, some of the highest rated MCU movies later on, Black Panther is right up there, and that's because it is a fantastic origin story. That one's that, beautiful. That, that one's kind of, it plays both ways, though, because he's introduced in Civil War, and you kind of already know who he is, but still, like, yeah. Spider-Man Homecoming, not for me, but a lot of people's favorite Spider-Man movie. Like, it, you know, it, it sets up an origin story for a character who we've, we've seen, like, seven origin stories for, you know? Yeah, yeah. But... We lost the art for how good an origin story can be, and especially with someone like Deadpool, who, unless you are a big comics person, you don't really know the origin for. I, I, I like to think I'm a pretty well-versed like comic reader, but I didn't know a whole lot about Deadpool before seeing the movie, and it kind of took me by surprise, because you think of him as one thing he is, which he is mostly, he's this Ryan Reynolds wisecrack, breaking the fourth wall, like you said, like very vulgar, but in a very funny, self-aware way. But the Deadpool movie packs, like, a lot of really unexpected emotional punch with, like, his diagnosis. And yeah. the, the, the love story between him and Vanessa is genuinely very endearing and very heartwarming. Yeah. It's why I'm excited for you to see, too, because they do expand, expand on that quite a bit. But, like, the first one, it really took me by surprise. I remember, like you said, the, the trailer, fantastic. That fucking DMX song is so good. Yeah. And then you go in and... It just like they make every right creative choice. It's not just that they're doing the, the Deadpool thing of like the breaking the fourth wall and you know making him this vulgar like just wisecrack. They, they, yeah. Every turn is always like rooted in this is a character who's been around for so long and is known for this one gimmick, and we're gonna play at every fucking corner of this possible this this gimmick. Like we're gonna yeah. do it every time, and it works every time because yeah. like. That's the thing, too, is they let Ryan just kind of go off. I mean, I'm sure the script for Deadpool is very small, and it's mostly just Ryan Reynolds at moving. Yeah. <laughs> um, which is perfect. That's what you should do. If it's a character or a person who loves the character, I, I Ryan Reynolds movies I go back and forth on because I think that the Deadpool thing is great, and then he has just been Deadpool in every movie since, which kind of bumps me up because I think he can be a very talented actor in other regards that he's just not using those muscles anymore. It's fine because like he's very good at that niche, so I'm fine with him with him doing that. But when he did it in Deadpool, it was still like new and fresh, and so I love the way he like like I said that had been a passion project for him for years. Yeah, and he did he did it first in just a abysmal movie, and they just it was so sad for a while. That was in 2009, and Deadpool was in 2016. So for those years. We all thought that was the only time we were going to see him as Deadpool, which is yeah. fucking depressing because he's a Deadpool who gets his mouth sewn shut. And just saying that out loud is like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. It's like a Batman who kills people, but like no one would be stupid enough to do that, right? Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't even have anything to say to that one. Yeah. The forget guys, you got to read in between the lines. This is his, he's far in the future and it's a, uh, well, remember, man, be man. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> he no he he just like he, I'm so glad he got the movie because he got to bring the character back and do it the way he was supposed to the first time, the yeah. first time like with his he's I think he's actually a credited screenwriter for the first movie because Good. he did so much for the character yeah but yeah I, I'm so excited for you to see too because you you made a great point of like they made that they could have just let that be the only thing because it's Marvel and the machine is always churning out things they couldn't have done that realistically but. Yeah. Story-wise, you're absolutely right where they could have just left it and that would just stand as, like, a perfect superhero movie. Yeah. Um, but with the stuff that's come, like comes after, yeah, I'm so excited for you to see, too. 
I know a lot of people don't feel this way because I know I just gushed and gushed about the first movie. I prefer the second movie. Okay. I think Deadpool 2 is fantastic. All right. There's just some, some stuff. It, it reminds me of like Guardians and Guardians 2 where a lot of people went into Guardians 2 expecting it to be as funny as the first one. And when it wasn't, everything else just seemed weaker like by association. Which yeah. is, again, I prefer Guardians 2 to Guardians. And so like I... Just because Deadpool 2, I, I will completely say, is not as funny as Deadpool. It's still fucking hilarious, but also it's just the, the comedy is not as strong in the second movie. The other stuff, to me, is stronger. Like, the comic book stuff, to me, is strong. The references are stronger. The villain is fantastic. Um, so all of that stuff tends to outweigh the comedy for me, which I know is, like, it, a lot of people are going into Deadpool movies just for the humor. They want to hear... The, the, the breaking the fourth wall and the self aware stuff and like I'm saying like, that's still prevalent in the second movie it's just not as like sharp as in the first movie yeah um but no I, I, I love to I think it's a very underrated it also came out like in March of 2018 so it came out right before Infinity War so it it didn't really stand a chance like it, it was like right in between Black Panther and Infinity War so it was like completely drowned out especially being a Marvel movie People only talked about Black Panther and Infinity War that year, and then like later Ant Man and whatever Ant Man the Wasp. But yeah. Deadpool two just did not stand a chance in terms of like attention. But it's really fun. Um, and then we're gonna do Loki, which like I mentioned, Cal has seen one episode of Loki, and it is the finale. <laughs> the yeah, and finale. I like half watched that. Yep. I was like going to bed, and you were like watching it, and I think I started paying attention towards it, like much later in the episode. But even then, I remember a specific moment where you and I both sat up. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, I know I've always wanted to watch Loki. I just, I've, I've been behind on my, like, Marvel TV shows, like, for a while. We're getting caught up. We just watched um, uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, and that was fantastic. That's probably just my number one. Yeah. Like, and it might be for a long time. Yeah. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, Kyle's been hyping up Loki season two the moment it like started coming out um, and just still talks about it even though it's been over for a while yep. um, so I'm definitely excited to get into that one yeah it's... and oh sorry um, to jump back to Deadpool uh, just the Deadpool 1 I haven't seen 2 um, the uh, actress for is her name Vanessa Vanessa yeah. Vanessa the Vanessa. actress uh, <laughs> the actress for her uh, she's incredible I've yep. seen her in a few things and one of my um favorite things she's in, even though it's a shit TV show, is Gotham. <laughs> she, yeah, she is very good. She's very good in Gotham, and I have this weird love-hate with Gotham. I fucking love it, and I'm, like, kind of interested in uh, rewatching. No, you're a okay. Thank you for adjusting that. I appreciate that. Um, uh, I love Gotham, and I fucking hate Gotham. Yeah. And I could go on and on about it. I, it's like, I, I feel like I'm tempted to rewatch it. I think it's dog shit, but I'm really entertained by it. But she was great in that. Really great. Consistently um, great. Like, yes, she never consistently being great. Good show. I think her character was written weirdly on times, but like her performances though were always really good. Yeah. Um, and she was very entertaining on screen, so lovable. Even when she was, yeah, I know, just so lovable, lovable. Mm -hmm. um, and no, uh, oh, that's funny. DC and Marvel. DC I, Marvel, I just I just made yeah. that connection of like, oh wow, you're just everywhere. <laughs> She's just playing both sides. <laughs> playing both sides. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, and so I'm excited to see more of her in uh, well, Deadpool, too. Yeah, she's great in those, great in Deadpool. I didn't see all of Gotham, but I loved what I saw of her in Gotham. For me, she will always be Inara from Firefly. Though. Yeah. I, she, Firefly is a favorite, absolute so favorite. Um, and she's just an iconic character. And so yeah. when I see her in, in things now, I love it. And I, I, you know, I love her in the Deadpool movies, love her in Gotham. It just makes me sad, though, because I'm like, I want another season of Firefly. Yeah. And at this point, it's been, you know, 20 it's plus years. Long, it's yeah. too long, If they did it now, it would not feel right. But it I just, was, yeah. They did their best. I mean, Serenity is a great way to salvage and, like, wrap up what they tried to. Yeah. But it just, it's so, it's the saddest case of it could have been something. And they just, Fox did not have faith in that show. And so they just axed it. Yeah. It's just so sad. But... I mean, we know all about, like, canceling. Like, that's, the, that's the number one, but there's always these canceled shows that could have been something. Yeah. That, I think that was the reason that I even showed Cal Firefly in the first place, is uh, Cal mentioned in our, our introduction that their favorite show is... Dark. Dark also, or the creators of Dark also created a show called 1899. Yeah. On Netflix. Uh, and, uh, I'm going to go on the tangent now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you said the title, and yeah. you knew... Okay, so... 
Uh, the director, um, and I, I believe she's also a writer, um, uh, Baron, and uh, his uh, partner in crime and writing, uh, Jante, I think. I might have butchered that. Very sorry. German names are hard. Yes, but they're both fucking fantastic. They're geniuses. But um, Baron, I remember he posted something on Instagram at the beginning of 2021 about a new show he was making. And I was like, thank fucking God. Uh, and it was 1899. I waited and was excited for every promotion that he dropped for it. It comes out in November of 2022. 2022. Um, and it was beautiful. It was incredible. I watched it, blasted through it. It was, it's beautiful. The twists, the mystery, the, the, the characters. And my favorite part is there are so many different languages in that. It's not just German. There's, it's, there's, um, just English, uh, German, Dutch, uh, Portuguese, I think, uh, uh, Japanese, uh, there's just so many, I can't even remember how to list them all off, uh, Spanish, um, just so many, and it's yeah. incredible, it, uh, uh, Polish, sorry, I'm just remembering them as I'm talking, uh, there's so many, and it's great, and there's language barriers, and you can see the characters to act and, pro like, convey the emotions that they do in that to still like show that they kind of understand it's it's incredible two months later not even two months later they cancel the show yeah so they didn't give it a chance at all and they try and i and of course they don't release statements or anything of why they did it they just did yeah and of course netflix doesn't say anything it's baron baron is the one who's going out and being like yeah so um unfortunately our show got canceled <laughs> it hasn't been two months it i watched um they made a special of it the making of 1899 it was a very expensive project with the technology they used it was incredible you can't even tell that they weren't like on like sets because it was made in uh quarantine and everything but like um or just with the covid restrictions at least but it was just um an expensive show to make and i don't think it had a, a good uh finish rate where like everyone who clicked on it they didn't finish it or whatever yeah. um but uh, that should not have... It was two months, and it was in the holiday season. Not everyone's going to be able to sit down and watch a show through the holiday season. Everyone's with family or working overtime. Yeah. And um, so that got canceled. It got axed. It's just Netflix has such a fucking brutal track record. They do. Killing shows that have so much potential. And, and what's frustrating is they don't give it a chance. Yeah. And I don't... Unfortunately, just don't think that it was going to be picked up by anything. No. Um, it ended on such a cliffhanger, like a heartbreaking cliffhanger. And I mean heartbreaking as in like it, it hypes you up so much only to go, I don't get any answers. Yeah. None. Um, I, and it sucks because Baron's mindset is always, he's not making a lengthy show. He writes it beforehand to usually be only like a three season thing. Yeah. He's got a fit and a start to end. He's not going to be like making it up as he goes, like to make another season. He's got a a, a goal in mind, like his his like the finish line. And they and I'm like, you just just come on, just come on, uh, give it a little bit of a chance. Nope. Action. And of course, when people hear, oh, it's canceled, they're not even going to bother like starting it. Sorry, you're okay. This go thing ahead. just keeps sliding. Yeah, I need to. Well, there we go. Some tape or something next yeah. time. Um, we're figuring this out. Yeah, <laughs> first time doing it. Like, we literally were, like, all, already driving, and I was like, oh, do you want to do that, by the way? Oh, yeah, let's get this camera set up. Yeah. Um, but it was, yeah, sorry. You know I was going to go off on a tangent no, there. No, I, I did that to set you up. I wanted to hear you talk about it. Cause uh, I, and that, that was truly, genuinely the reason I showed Cal Firefly is Cal showed me um, 1899. Yeah. I also loved it. I felt guilty because you're talking about how, like, people watched it when it dropped, or they just... Oh, Netflix also just has a notorious history of like burying things when they drop where you can't even like see it on the front page. So I remember yeah. like briefly knowing of 1899, having only seen Dark once, and I was very intrigued by it, but I just, so many other things were happening and coming out, and I just didn't get to it when it came out. Yeah. So, and if you, and like I said, it was during a busy time for everyone, so yeah. it comes out, it gets, it was actually, what's frustrating is it was in the top 10 of like, most watched stuff on Netflix. It yeah. was in the top 10. Right. So people were watching it. People were starting it. People were interested. 
it's got a very, like, when you hover over it on Netflix, you're like, whoa, this is catching my attention. There's, like, a ship and water and weird shapes. Like, cool. The, the premise weird is really shapes. interesting. Yeah, it's like, oh, you know, mysteries and a missing boat. Ooh, like, it's got a good mystery. It's a, it's a, like a, it's a period piece. It's yeah. really cool. Um, but people would start it or they didn't even get to start it yet because it's a busy they have it on their watch list and as soon as they hear it's cancelled a lot of people either just stopped watching or never bothered to start it Yeah. because who wants to start a cancelled show yeah. it's soul sucking like it sucks it's, it's devastating knowing that you're not going to get anything two months that. guys two, two months, months. Yeah. I was I was really impressed you mentioned like the language barrier thing I don't think I've ever seen something that explores that yes. in that way where like even the, the cast yeah did not all obviously they all spoke those languages so they were yeah. not speaking each other's languages even on set and so they had uh, correct me if I'm wrong they had like translators on set yeah they had translators on set mediate or like to even like communicate between actors and stuff but yeah. like the, the director, trust that yeah. that takes between actors to still be doing those scenes and, and selling the hell out of them if yeah. you can't understand what the other person is saying is so impressive to, you have an uh, outline of a script and you know what the scene is but you don't know if they're just like, for all you know, they could be completely going off script and just improving, and you just have to trust the process. Yeah. And that's like, I, I just never seen a show or a movie handle something like that. Um, there was one of my favorite things of watching the making of 1899, and I wish they did that for Dark. I loved seeing yep. every little, th oh my gosh. I want a book about Dark. Oh my gosh, I need so much more. I just want people to talk about Dark. I want to talk about Dark. We'll do it eventually. I'm, I'm putting a pin in it, writing it down. <laughs> But um, in the making of 1899, there's a, a shot of Baron walking up to one of the actresses, and, and it was like one of the, like the opening scenes of uh, it's like in the first episode where they're all in like the dining hall or whatever you want to call it. Um, and uh, he walk uh, he like Baron walks up to her and is like trying to like ask her to do something in the scene to like do it differently. And like there's a I think she speaks like a little bit of English I think. So they were like kind of like throwing some words around and like to, like getting to understand each other. And um, I think they would also help him out with like, a, oh, so you can, we, I can say it like this, but like the proper word for it in my language is this. And he's like, oh, well then let's do that. Like it was, it's so, I mean, come on, language is like the, the barrier of language is just so, it's so tall that yeah. that wall is huge and watching people break through it or work around it, work under, it's so interesting. It's very inspiring. Like it's just the collaborative there, yeah. process is really cool to see him know his actors so well and to work with them and like the, there's just a genuine like respect and trust between all of them yeah. so that's how they work they I, don't, I was just so impressed by that that yeah yeah that was all behind the scenes stuff i mentioned too in the show every character's background has a lot of it, their their own cultures in it so yeah. you are getting a taste of everything and like watching it affect their lives now and like kind of like why they're on the ship and everything like yeah. it's all it all has so much of their culture and background and everything. Um, it just, it's like, just like bled in all the stories together. It's just so wonderful. Yeah. I hate to say it. I recommend 1899. Go watch yeah, it. It's, it's hard it's, to say not to watch it because it's so good. It's yeah. just, you have to know that you're only going to get that. Yeah. Well, that, I, I hold out hope because like i I brought up Firefly a lot. Like, that was canceled, but then in the years since has gotten plenty of, like, comic series and yeah, adaptations. I don't know if they would go that route for 1899, but, like, I just think that, like, you never know. You never know how something can continue in, in another platform or, yeah. or medium. I would love to see... I honestly think Graphic Novel could be a cool route for 1899. I, I think that would be an interesting yeah. way to... Especially the way that season one ends. I'd love to see it continue in Graphic Novel format. Or just a stream, another streaming service picks it up. That's the idea, yeah, right? Yeah, that would like, be the ideal. I just, um, I think at the same time that 1899 got canceled, if I, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe Wednesday got canceled. It was not renewed for a second right, season. Yeah. But something picked it up, and they still made another season. Wednesday? Wednesday. Oh, I did not know that. I remember, so we, you and I were like, um, like just starting to become friends around that time. We were starting to talk a lot in yeah. January that the, the month that got canceled. And I remember texting you, it's on Discord. I texted you saying 1899 and Wednesday did not get renewed for another season. Oh, see, I, I remember that being you were like mad that everyone was watching Wednesday and like no, it that was, was getting the views. 
that Wendy and I should have gotten. No, it wasn't that. It was they both didn't get renewed. They both got canceled. Okay. Yeah, but then something immediately picked up Wednesday because it's like, hello, Wednesday. It's a big show. It's people loved it. So yeah. okay, like I was like, okay, listen, we, if you you want to cancel eighteen ninety nine, like because it wasn't getting t uh, enough talk or whatever, like okay, but Wednesday. So I was like, I was mad at Netflix because like they We're were like, them both. yeah, I'm yeah. like, you're you guys are so fucking cheap. Keep raising your prices and won't like commit to anything but you're also going to put a lot of money into making one fucking show and it can either be ass or really really great and i'm like all right like it was killing yeah. all your biggest shows for, yeah for no like reason. it's like, for no reason Mindhunter was another thing of that i don't know if you ever saw that show no i think sense8 was another victim of it Sense8, too yeah, yeah. I, there's so many victims of netflix's like fucking money problems and i'm gonna blame their money problems because if if they're not gonna say anything else it's i'm gonna blame it on their fucking money problems yeah. like Oh, they're spending too much money. It's like, okay, well, like, if they're making good views, go fucking, like, I don't know. It's, it was so frustrating. Um, and, uh, what was that? What else was I going to say? There's a lot of other, um, uh, streaming services that I have not seen jack up their prices or do that password sharing bullshit, and they're making originals, and they're doing really well for themselves. Um, so I, as I don't... I'm Go sorry, ahead. I just, as of three days ago, Wednesday is still being released on Netflix. Yeah, uh, they, it didn't get renewed for another season. I don't think it was canceled, it just wasn't renewed. Oh. Um. I just, you said something else picked it up, I was curious if it was like a prime thing now. Oh, no, it's still on Netflix, okay. but I think there was, I forgot the specifics, it's been well it over been a, a year. While, it's yeah. been a, a year since I've uh, looked into it, but I remember it specifically... Wednesday also being a part of my talk of 1899. It was, canceled, it was sure either canceled, renewed not renewed, renewed or back, something. Yeah. It just like people were being like, really? There's not a second season? Yeah. Like, what's going on here? And I remember it being um, eventually like brought back, but not 1899. I was still happy. I have not seen Wednesday. I just know it's very beloved. Yeah. Kind of shifted just a little bit to get you more in frame. There we go. Um, but uh, I just, I was like, okay, like, Thank God they're not canceling everything, but like it just yeah. I remember it being a whole thing. There was yeah. other shows that got canceled around the same time. Um, I remember Sandman was at risk was it like Warrior Nun or back. something? It was a, a, a there's a show called Warrior Nun. I think I might be that. wrong on the title. I think it's an Apple show like okay. the um, Apple, TV. Apple TV. Yeah, plus, yeah. but I remember another just a great like there was just it was a time period where everything was just like coming out every and I, I, I just do remember yeah. that because everyone was just mad. They were like, yeah. why are you taking all these shows away? What's happening? Yeah. yeah. Why? Yeah. It, it was so frustrating. But, yeah. I That's, could it's go It's just on so on. sad about shows. Like, there, there's, there are some shows that are just a one season, like a miniseries, and it's just a beautiful contained story. Like, that is always really fun. But there's also, like, you just want more. And it was clear that, like, they wanted to make more. You said, like, Baron always has an outline of how he wants his entire story to go. Yeah. And you don't end season one like that without a plan for season two. Yeah. Like, it's just, that's not... I'm like, Baron, give me your goddamn notebook. Yeah, we give want me. the... <laughs> give us the notes. Yeah. I just, yeah, it, it, it makes oh. me sad to see stuff like that. I just want to talk about 1899 again. Uh, I'm going to go to quick tangent. This time I'll be quick. Uh, 1899, Baron is a really, really great creator because when he started 1899, he brought people over from the Dark Project, and I was so excited same uh cinematographer yep. is that the word yep. yeah um the same guy who did the music ben same frost composer, um yeah. yeah and uh an actor as well from uh dark um i don't know how to say his name but um he was great um and like it was so cool to see all of them come back and do just a, as a great job as they did in dark and it, it just it kept the same feel of uh baron's creations all together like you would see his, t his style, his taste, because they're the same people making it. And it was yeah. just, it was so great. It, it sucked because I was so excited. He's already working on another project and it's based off a graphic novel. I've already have the whole series. I'm really excited for it. Um, I just have to wait another year or something like that. And I just have to hope that it's, because it's going on Netflix. He has a deal with Netflix, so. <sighs> Netflix, don't fuck this one. I'm just crossing my fingers. Because that's even more that you hope because it's, a, like you said, based, based off of a graphic novel and something is killing the children is at least like what four volumes I six think? six volumes so you you have to hope that they netflix has some common sense about this is a more than one season story yeah. we have to let this play out he's still it's still like in works i don't even know anybody anything about the cast or anything yeah. and it's just it's been a year i think 
maybe not a year since they've released that news, but I just, I want to, I'm, you know, holding out hope. They have news. Oh, and uh, this was an incredibly funny thing. I don't even know if you remember this. I just, I do. just remember. I know what you're about yeah. to say. <laughs> so, Something is Killing the Children it was already a project in the works, and the original person who picked it up to create it was... Mike Flanagan. Which, which is, is Kyle's... Like my Baron. That's... Yeah, Kyle's Baron. favorite Mike is my guy. creator That's, and yeah. Baron's mine. Yeah, and so it was really funny for Mike to drop it for creative differences. Yeah, he, he it was creative differences. Yeah. I mean, he had some ideas that Netflix wasn't going with. Yeah, but, so, but then Baron picked it up, and I'm like, that's just, how funny is that? Yeah, and it wasn't even like a point of contention between the two of us, because I was like, well, if it was going to be anyone, yeah. I'm glad it was, because especially if they're saying creative differences, I can't imagine that Baron would be the one to like tone things down. You know, oh, like no. if Mike left for creative differences, I'm sure it was just going in a direction that they didn't want the annotation to go, but yeah. I'm sure Baron would still be hyping up the, the, the scares and the whatever. But yeah. that was, I remember that was really funny because that was also around the time that Mike Flanagan, he used to be Netflix exclusive. Yeah. All of his four, five uh, shows have been on Netflix. He very recently, because he's another victim of, we're talking about these cancellations, his most, uh, not his most recent show, The Fall of the House of Usher, but the one before that, The Midnight Club, was also intended to be yeah. a multi-season show. His first. It would have been his first multi-season show. Which is um, so fucked. Yeah, because it was based on this old, like, Goosebumps-esque book series yeah. back in the day. Completely got canceled. Um, and it's admittedly his weakest show, but it still had crazy potential. And I yeah. can see them making plenty of seasons. And I think that for him was the last straw. So, like, that happened. But it was canceled while he was still making... The Fall of the House of Usher, and I think he finished that with Netflix and then left, and he has since signed on with Amazon. He has a con contract to make exclusive shows with uh, Amazon Prime, which I'm very excited about, because if, if it's not going to be Netflix, I think Prime is the next best thing. Yeah. You know, they, they make The Boys, um, and they, make, like, they still make very big TV shows, mm -hmm. so I trust them to, to work with Flanagan, because yeah. he ultimately, he's a big Stephen King fan, and he said multiple times that his, like, his white whale, his passion project, is adapting the Dark Tower uh, series by Stephen King. And, you know, we're living in a post-Dune world, so, like, I'm not going to call it unadaptable, because everyone said that about Dune, and now we're living in a world where those are, like, the greatest movies of all time now, yeah. like, the first two movies. So, I trust that if anyone can adapt that series, it can be Flanagan, who, like, knows King, like, the back of his hand, and he has already adapted, you know, Doctor Sleep and Gerald's Game, and I... I yeah, both fantastic movies. Um, so I, I hope Prime can work with him and like give him the licenses he needs yeah. to just and the, run wild. Out of all the streaming services, Amazon's like the one I like am just never mad at. I don't think no. I've ever been mad at it. I mean, I'm mad at Amazon for plenty of reasons, but not for like the streaming stuff. Yeah, yeah. Amazon Prime Video yes. is the one thing I'm not mad about. Jeff Bezos. Yeah, it's one thing they haven't fucked up, but like, yeah, yeah because they they've the boys is like a they're they're they're. Uh, signature thing right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. And that They've is... They've got other really good shows. I mean, one of... It's a very small show. It's like one season. It's quick. And I've watched it a few times because it's almost like... It's a comfort one. And if you like some, like, supernaturally ghost shit, mm -hmm. Truth Seekers is a great quick watch. Yep. Another great show that I like on there. It's a little bit of a rom com type vibe. It's, I think it's called Upload. That's another one. Mm -hmm. Um... They've got really great stuff. They do. They don't advertise a lot for their shows, but it's it's almost like as if they're saving money that way because people still watch them. Uh, do you see a lot of advertising that's for the their problem. shows? No, because like a that's that's them in a lot of streaming services. The same with like Apple does not do a lot of yeah, they don't. promoting or marketing, but they tend to have really good shows. It's just that Netflix is doing all the marketing and then canceling their shows, whereas these streaming right. services are not doing marketing and then just sneakily <laughs> renewing everything and keeping these shows going. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, Prime, it feels like I said something, but yeah, what do I know? Right. Uh, Prime has great stuff. They Even if they don't have original stuff, they have, like, they'll be the only streaming service for stuff like Fleabag. You cannot get Fleabag anywhere else because um, it was, a obviously, a British show that aired on a British network and then was brought to the U.S., but it, it's not streaming anywhere else. You can only watch it on, on Prime. So, like, yeah. they'll, they'll still carry exclusive things. But you're right. They do have, like, very underappreciated original stuff. I have not yeah. seen... I've seen bits and pieces of Truth Seekers and then none of Upload, but I do hear very good things about those. Um, you know, I mentioned The Boys. It's like their signature yeah. show. They even have... I was mixed on the first season of the, the Lord of the Rings show they made, The Rings of Power. I haven't seen it. But it's still like the fact that they are making a fucking Lord of the Rings show is a big deal. Like, they're, that's, that's a huge that's, IP. Yeah. You know? They are... And they have their own movies too. Like Prime has plenty of original movies, so I, I think that like those, yeah. 
I don't know, I, I got into, I mean, because Netflix gave me, like, Daredevil, so that was always going to be a bias of, like, Netflix original shows are, are the way to go, but yeah. nowadays they've got it's a lot just, of good stuff, so but then they're stuff. just like, yeah, there's so many things that are pissing me off. I mean, hello, we could talk about one of them, The Witcher. Yeah. And God. that show was about uh, immediately plummeting because the main actor left because they were not sticking to his suggestions, which was saying we should stick true to the fucking books. Yeah, it wasn't just his suggestions. It, they were not staying faithful to the source material. Yeah, and he was yeah. like, well, I'm not being a part of that. Goodbye. Because he's a fucking G, yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, well, hello, that's fucking saying something. Like, yeah. they're the, the people who are making shit over there, they're either, they're making shit poorly and it's making the actors upset um or they the when it's the the people creating stuff are doing it right if they're they're canceling that shit yeah. like it's there's, oh, no winning. there's just no winning over there's netflix. no winning yeah. netflix pisses me off they're they keep jacking up their prices every other year um they're doing that whole like password sharing and other and then of course they inspired a bunch of other streaming services the there was yeah. uh i think max is doing it now i don't fucking disney know plus is doing it oh disney plus did it yeah and like uh amazon though i have not heard they're doing it they right. did they did do that thing where they have like ads in the beginning now um, yeah but i can take that but like, that's fine that doesn't do anything for me. Like, that no. doesn't piss me off if there's one ad in the beginning and it's all for their own TV shows. Ads Not in like, general, uh, don't here, me. go buy some Tide Pods. Like, it's like uh, how Hulu does if you know, if you don't have the premium package. Like, yeah. it doesn't cut in the middle to tell you to go to Target and buy something. It, it's, it's just their other stuff. If it's a movie, that'll bother me, like the Hulu thing or whatever. But if it's a TV show, I don't mind that because it's just, I mean, like, growing up watching cable, it's just yeah. the same thing. It's not. That's never been a deal breaker for me. If I'm if I'm gonna pay less for a streaming service just because there's ads, I'm totally gonna do that. You yeah. know, like it's just ads don't really. It's not a problem unless you're because if you're watching a movie on Hulu and it's like this really intense scene and then like you said like the fucking Tide commercial comes on, that is uh, frustrating. But oh, if it's yeah. a TV show where there's natural commercial breaks, that makes more sense. Yeah. Like I'll yeah. watch like the X Files on Hulu, and that was when it was on cable when it would have commercial breaks. So like right. this it would be great because this great like revelation happens. Mulder, Mulder. That's his name, right? It is. Okay. Fox. For some reason, I thought it was Skulder and Moly for a second, and I thought my brain just did a whole... No, it is Mulder. It's Mulder and Scully. Yeah. They just don't sound like real words sometimes. Yeah. Like, they're both it's such weird names. It's been a long names. time. Fox anyway, Mulder, Mulder yeah. will have this huge revelation and tell Scully about it. It's this dramatic thing, and then it just naturally cuts to a break, and you're like, oh my god, bring it back now. Yeah. I want to know. Or another good example is um, we were watching The Bear, but on Hulu, and we don't have the premium package, so there's ads. But that really helped on occasion because we're sitting there not realizing we're holding our breath or on the edge of our seat and an ad hits and we go, oh my God. Like it's just, it helped us a little bit. I yeah. mean, like I would love to sit down and watch those without a break, but like I'm telling you that first time Sometimes watch, it kind of helped. It kind of helped. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It's absolutely needed for the bear. Yeah. Uh, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Uh, it helped. Um, but, uh, and, and we were, it kind of like, helps like pause the show so you can like talk because i don't want to talk during the show yeah. sometimes i do because i catch myself but like they just sometimes i'm like I, i'm so invested nobody fucking talk to me i need this but if i want to talk i have to say okay can we pause real quick and just saying that i'm like oh no just watch I pause. yeah, yeah i don't just... want to but sometimes i need to because i'm like no 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 i, I know there's going to be more happening right now and it'll answer my questions or whatever but i need yeah. to talk about it before i hear the rest that's like again like between tv and movies that's a huge pet peeve of mine during a movie if someone wants yeah. to like pause a movie and be like what do you think about that I, i'm like i don't know what i think yet because the movie isn't over like yeah. well no you, you, that happened one time but yeah like, i that just time. that was a different thing because it was a huge question like, of, like and it wasn't related to the plot of the movie it was more like what would you do in this yeah situation? i was still making fun of myself <laughs> yeah uh, uh, yeah but like i did that once but <laughs> yeah but like the, the, the thing being of like someone being like what do you think is gonna happen or who's that like yeah. I, i'm like the fucking movie has an hour left maybe you should just shut up and watch the movie and yeah. you'll probably answer your own question there like i just i don't I firmly believe a movie is a movie for a reason and structured to be watched in one sitting and like a, as a whole. I understand there's long movies sometimes you want to break them up into you're tired you want to finish the rest tomorrow or whatever like that's fine. But I just if it's a if it's a whole piece if it's a, a one thing you got to watch it like that and yeah. like it's it's best appreciated that way. You know like that's why I can't wait when um, uh, Dune two comes out on physical. I want to get that and the first one watch them as one giant movie 
Because that I means that's the that first book, right? That sounds gorgeous. That would be fantastic. I think that would make for an incredible experience. It'd be like a six hour movie. Yeah. Um, I've sat down and watched all the Lord of the Rings extended yeah. editions, like all in one sitting. So, like. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Worth. Um, oh, you just said something and I was going to jump in. Um, oh, oh, when it talks, when it comes to like talking and asking questions during a movie, the only, the only time I allow it is when I'm watching movies with my mom. She does not watch movies, so she likes to ask questions. And honestly, the fact that she's asking questions means she's paying attention, and that's wildly different, and which is incredibly funny. So, like, I got all my movie loving everything from my dad, and none of that from my mom because my mom just they could not pay attention to uh, movie. Loves TV shows, but does not pay attention to a movie. Um, but my favorite time was when my mom decided to ask a bunch of questions about what movie? Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> so she's talking about Anakin and asking all these questions and I get to fucking sit up and be like, you want to ask me questions I'm about Anakin? You fucking ass. Oh, don't mind if I do. So I'm like rambling and rambling and I, like she would go to the bathroom and I would pause it just so she could see the scene and be like, look, look at how late, like, oh, oh, it was great. It's like my favorite time that like, because it's already something I've seen yep. and she's not really watching it, but she's watching it enough to ask me questions. Yep. So it was like as if she was entertaining me just to keep me like, like in a yeah. good mood or something like it just, but it was, it was fantastic. That's I, the only time I, I allow it is when my mom does it. I do understand the distinction of like, it's, it's fun to talk about something when someone is maybe not as like invested in something as you are, but they want to hear why it's so cool or so good or whatever. Like that, that makes sense of like, you yeah. want to, here's why this is so good. The scene is great or whatever. Yeah. Like, that makes sense to me. I just think or even like, doing it for a loved one. Like, it, you yeah, still don't give one, a fuck, yeah. but, like, you're like, ah, oh, I know they're passionate. Let me hear you I be passionate. I want to hear about it, yeah. Yeah. That's, like, a love language, by the way, is, like, when they want to just hear how you're, like, they don't give a fuck, but yeah. they will give it a chance. They will yes. never shit talk you to your face, and they just go, be passionate about this. Tell me about it. Yeah, find your people who will do that. Like, that's yeah. a big thing. If you can, if someone can just rant for an hour, and you can just sit there and listen and soak it yeah. all in, that's a big deal. Yeah. That's how we connected, really. Yeah, really. Um, it's a really, really good way to connect. We made a lot of friends that way. Yeah. It, you just, it, you make good connections with them. Because the thing is, is you're not going to like be passionate about everything in your life. There's going to be some things no. that you just don't care about. But if you, if you, if there's someone that you do care about who is passionate about that, you're going to want to hear about it because yeah. don't I don't on people's passions. I don't well, give a fuck how shitty they can be. Not like, even don't shit on it. Just like, I don't understand it, but I want to hear why it's so cool. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. I, just because you don't get it doesn't mean it's invalid or it doesn't matter. It's not important. Yeah. Like, just it's not for you. Let someone yeah. else rant about it and listen listen to them rant. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, I just, I, when I said, like, don't shit on people's passions, is sometimes it's like somebody could be really excited about something and, like, you're like, okay, that was just a boy band. What the fuck? Like, no, I'm just like... It's not like, just a boy band. Yeah, yeah, to them, like, I don't, like, you can have your own opinions, but you know what? You don't always need to express your opinions to people like that. Yeah. Like, they don't actually need to hear how much you don't like them. You could say, hey, that's not for me. Like, that's the nicest way to put it, is it's not for me. Yeah. Let them talk, though. Let Absolutely. them do their thing. Absolutely. Yeah. It, yeah. That's. I will always stand by that. I hate when I hear all the people, like, especially, like, you know people get shit on for their passions if they go, like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm talking too much or, like, anything oh, like yeah. that. That's some, some people are just, like, heart. overly yeah. insecure, and you're like, okay, I feel like you're just doing that because you're hyper aware of the, how much you're talking, but, yeah. like... Also, if I'm actively listening and not saying anything, you don't need to stop yourself. Yeah, please keep going. Yeah. yeah. Now you're just, like, stepping on your own foot. Like, keep talking. Yeah. Especially if I'm, like, listening intently and asking questions, I'm listening. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Love talking. I, mean, yeah, I do. I love talking, too. We are almost home. I just thought of an idea. Yeah. I think to wrap all of these up, we're going to do a lot of these road trips episodes we drive yes. a lot we, go, we drive places a lot yeah so we do there's gonna be a lot of these it's more free form it's just us ranting yeah. about anything we we make um hour or hour and a half drives and sometimes more likely in this the next this next year a lot of three hour drives yeah. um so we sit in the car and we talk a lot like kyle said at the beginning we do, we talk like this anyways even if we're going 20 minutes down the road we're like Rank the Marvel shows for me. Like, we did that. That's just us. Like, it's yeah. just how we are. Um, yeah, so for for each of these episodes, I think as an end, it would be fun if we get each other to just rank something random. Like you just said, rank the Marvel shows. Okay. A ranking of just anything that comes to your head. A ranking or 
something along that line of like, give me your favorite whatever. Okay. Go off about this. Because we were just talking about ranting and like listening to someone else rant. We're going to do that to each other. And then that's how we're going to end the episode. Um, this has been a lot of fun though. From the 2023 movies, what's your top five movies? Is that a good one? Uh, it's not ranking. Well, it kind of is. It, no, it's absolutely, absolutely ranking. I just, I know you already have it because of your letterbox, but like, go ahead and talk about it. Well, yeah, I, I already have it all. I just, I yeah. have this in my head, but I, I, the only thing I'm, this will obviously be up, okay, yeah, because I was thinking about when this is going to be uploaded, oh, it'll be after the yeah, Oscars, because well, that's going to be a spoiler for like, whatever, but you already know my ranking, so it's not going to be a spoiler for you yeah. either. Okay, so, five to one, mm-hmm. number five, Godzilla minus one, um, yes, fantastic movie. It, it says something that we have a Godzilla movie coming out at the end of this month, but I'm only thinking about this one. Like, this is just, it's so good. Um, I, uh, sorry, quick thing. I've bought merchandise for the new Godzilla, what is it? Godzilla, Godzilla Kong. Kong yeah, Empire. New Empire. I bought merch from that, but because I'm thinking of Godzilla minus one. Yeah. <laughs> um, number four, uh, the most recent one I watched on this list, uh, Killers of the Flower Moon. Fantastic movie. Again, this will be uploaded post- uh, Oscars. Yeah. Like so I'm weeks, just gonna yeah. make a bold prediction and say the Oscar-winning Killers of the Flower Moon because Lily Gladstone is coming for the Oscar. Yeah. Um, number three, Past Lives. One I saw back in I think I watched it Christmas Day because I like pain, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it has fucked me up since. Like I think about that movie all the time. I think about that ending all the time. Fantastic, beautiful movie. Uh, number two, All of Us Strangers. Um, you really do like pain. I definitely. You know me. Um, all the strangers is just I have so much to say about it I'm reserving a lot of it because again like you're gonna, you're gonna see this after the Oscars episode but we are getting ready to film that later today yeah so basically they've heard lot, it already they've heard <laughs> they've probably heard they've been sick of hearing me talk about Andrew Scott but um all the strangers and then number one of course as you know already is Oppenheimer uh movie of the fucking decade like it's just and the decade yeah. is only three years in but it's just fucking a masterpiece yeah adore that movie can't say enough we'll say more but yeah um, that's five to one. Uh, let me think of your... Do you want the same one or do you want a different one? No, give me a different one. You can either do just your favorite or maybe like rank a couple. Okay. Just top TV villains. Ooh. Like just Ooh. best villains on television. Damn. Okay. Um, I'll give like five, but not in a specific order. Yeah. Um, but my first one that I'm thinking of, uh, Wilson Fisk. Of course. Um, I want to go with, um, can I do someone who's a hero and a villain all at once? Um, if they're a villain at any point in the show, then it counts. Okay, so, um, Jonah slash Adam, more like Adam, Adam from Dark. Interesting. Um, because he's, he's such a gray area, but a villain, literally, like, just kills people because he thinks it's gonna help stop things. Like, or like, it, I'm like, like, I, there's just, there, yeah, I'm gonna consider him one of a, a villain. Towards like the end, it starts to get really fucking weird, but like, it, you know, like, with, what, what, what is he doing? But I'm gonna consider him uh, a villain. The only reason I said hero is because at the start, Jonas, he was trying He's to be a hero. Yeah, yeah. Um, but turns into more of a villain. Like, he just doesn't know what he's fucking doing. Like, it's a, yeah. It, so I'm gonna do him because he was the face for a lot of fucked shit in that series. So, him and Wilson Fisk. And, um, this this list will definitely change. Um, yeah. Because I'm just, I'm thinking of some now. They're off the top of my head. I probably, I'm not yeah, a very... top of your head is different from, like, if you have a list prepared. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, when it comes from Game of Thrones, I think the one who was just, like, a mastermind and had so much power and, like, would always kind of piss me off that with how much power she had, which is Cersei. Oh, okay, God. I, you said mastermind. I was worried you were going to say little finger. Oh, I would have been so pissed. Oh, my God, no. Fuck that guy. No, fuck that guy. No, Cersei um, is fantastic. Yeah, Cersei, definitely. She was just, wow. Wow. Also, amazing performance when it comes to the, yep. the actress. Amazing. But those three... Probably the governor from Walking Dead. Oh, interesting. Um, I like Negan a lot, but when you watch past Glenn... Yeah. It changes. He's, like, he's pretty good for a little bit. Negan's like, Negan as a villain. He's a fantastic villain, and then and, he just... The show sucks, so it's not... Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think... 
for a little bit after Glenn, it was pretty good still. But then it just, it, but it doesn't get better. No. You know what I mean? Like there's no up. It's just, it's a little bit on the same track and then just starts dipping. So Negan's a good villain. But if you're going to talk about someone who's been a, a, a good villain from start to his finish, yeah. that's the governor. No, the governor argues He literally chopped off a, a, someone's head and he was fucking fantastic. Yeah. Like that, it was, yeah. Um, I kind of forget about that just because when I think about The Walking Dead, I think about how it's just, I, I yeah. hated that it was on for so long. But if we talk about one of the best so arcs, strong. though, which is yeah. the prison arc, the prison arc um, so I do loved when they were in Alexandria and everything, but like that that full arc is not good. It's I think half the, of the it. The prison arc is the peak of the show. Yes, and it, I, it really was. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that's, that's my fourth one is The Governor. Oh, how can I forget? Um, I'm trying to make sure I remember his name correctly. Ugh. Um, How can I forget his name? Well, because I remember, uh, like, uh, you know what? I can still, Omni Man. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. We, it's not Mark Grayson, really right? about Nolan Grayson. They Nolan. Want to hear See, I was going to yeah. say Mark Grayson because that's the only, I was like, but it's not Mark Grayson. I can't remember. Omni Man. Maybe a spoiler for season two. I don't know. <laughs> Omni Man. 100%. Oh, yeah. He might be top, actually. He might be in, like, number one. Omni Man. 100%. Yeah, he's. There we go. He's so good. And we're not even done with him. That's the cool thing. Is like, oh. I have no idea what they're doing with him going forward. But yeah. Great yeah. I don't know what, what's going to happen to him. Oh, damn. I'm remembering more now. Yeah. There's going to be like I, the thing with these on the spot things at the end of the episodes is going to be with the first things that come to us. And then yeah. after it's going to be like, oh my God, I could have said these other five. Yeah. Like, I'm going to give one little like spotlight on somebody who was just not in my top five, but uh, Shigaraki from My Hero Academia because <laughs> I'm watching the. I finished the. I'm caught up on the anime. I uh, don't read the manga, but um, in the anime, he went from like a whiny rat to just something else entirely, and it's it's fucking amazing. Wow. Um, but yeah, he'll be my little spotlight on top of the five. Yeah, that was really good. That was good. Uh, I'll be more prepared next time. Yeah, we will. Uh, we'll have easier, I think, on the spot thoughts that we can yeah. just immediately just think of like, oh, a top five, whatever. Yeah. But um, yeah, thanks for joining us on this car ride. It makes it a lot more. It makes the car ride go a lot by quicker. Yeah. We're just spitting. Um, oh yeah, and we're excited fun. to see you um, uh, on the next car ride. Uh, no, we can't have McDonald's. You will sit in the back seat and yeah. shut the fuck up. In fact, if you ask again, we are going to be ordering one black coffee and nothing else. Nothing else. Behave. <laughs>